So we aim to target rural students in Lake County, California. It's a fairly impoverished area. It's rural. It's a working landscape. So students come from the perspective of a working landscape. They're not necessarily well in tuned with the ecology as we might think that they are. So the aims of the program are to promote academic achievement in a fairly impoverished community. These are fairly poor students. We also aim to engage students in the scientific process. Our goal really is to create more scientists out of this program. We also aim to develop a sense of community with the environment and give these students from Lake County a sense of place in their home. And it's all founded on the scientific process, which many of you know is sort of you generate a hypothesis based on some observations. You test that hypothesis in an experiment or a thought process. And then you sort of collect data and interpret that hypothesis and come to a conclusion. So we go into the classroom. And for nine weeks, we have the students run a plant growth experiment where they grow bean plants on two different soil types and collect data and interpret data and do all the things a PI would do in any other academic program. We focus on serpentine and non-serpentine soils because there's a clear contrast. You have serpentine soil, which is really low in plant available nutrients. It's a hard place for plants to grow, but it supports a lot of native plant diversity and it's an important part of our biodiversity in California. So we bring samples into the classroom, and students get to taste, smell, touch, and in some cases, taste the different soils, <laughs> and start to think about how a plant would grow on those two different soil types, really make predictions for it. We have them do activities that facilitate the hypothesis formation. So we have them try to understand what a plant needs to grow. So in this example, it's from their journal where they're trying to learn the, the process of photosynthesis, how plants take in light and CO2 and they generate sugar and oxygen and water. And then they develop their hypothesis just like any PI would do in any academic program. And we expect them to make predictions for how those plants will grow on loam soil and serpentine soil, and any other observations that they think they need. So in this photo, I'm showing the plant growth experiment. So they get samples of serpentine and loam soil, and they grow bean plant, so it's the same species that grows on the two different soil types. And they rear these plants for nine weeks, and they take complete control of the experiment. So they measure plant height, they me measure germination. We give them basic formats for collecting data. So they collect data on the number of seedlings that emerge from each of the soil types. And they graph it, just as we would in academia. And they do this over the course of the experiment. So this example is loam and plant height over the 42 days of the experiment that they collected data. And they have to be very careful in how they collect that data, because sometimes there's minute differences between plant height. And so it teaches them sort of how important it is to be precise and tedious in your work. It all culminates when the students collect all their data, they interpret it, they share it with their, their fellow students, and we take them out on a field day at McLaughlin Reserve, which is about 20 miles away from Lower Lake Elementary some place they've never been before. They actually don't even know exists in most cases. But it's an incredible location. It's incredibly diverse. It has a lot of native rare plants that occur nowhere else but in this location. And it's because serpentine and non-serpentine soils occur close together. So they get to spend the day exploring and being fun and interesting. And they do things like explore food webs in a pond. So we collect. Um, animal and plant samples from the pond, and they get to hold it in their hands and think about the connections among the organisms, who eats who, who relies on who for energy, and what happens if a link goes missing. One of their favorite things is encountering the California newt, which it happens to be that the field day often occurs right in the middle of newt breeding season, so you get these big newt mating balls, which is like 20 newts all collected together having fun. 
But we also bring the plant growth experiment in the classroom home to them in the field by having them measure plant height on serpentine and non-serpentine soils in the field. So they get to see the real world applications of their study. They get to see the meaning of it all. One of their favorite projects, though, is a predator-prey experiment where they have to be, they have to pretend they're a bird predator finding these clay caterpillars in serpentine and non-serpentine plant communities. Serpentine happens to be a very low productivity community, so it's really easy to pick out the clay caterpillars. And so students learn that it kind of sucks to be a caterpillar on serpentine. You get picked out pretty easily. We get a lot of positive feedback from the program. Students telling us they had never thought about being a scientist before we came into the classroom, but now that their goals <coughs> include being an ecologist or being a scientist, that's a goal they'd like to pursue. We have other values of sort of evaluation. Um, so pre-program, we tend to find students consider scientists to be these disheveled white males in a lab with lots of chemicals and things going on. But by the end of the program, because we have researchers coming in from different programs, they have a very different perspective of what a scientist is. And it includes females doing all kinds of different things. And in the end, they're able to identify themselves as scientists, which is the ultimate goal of the program. Thank you.